So we've been talking about Jesus' visit with the Nephites after his death. And he taught them lots of different things. He went back and forth and he saw them. Um, one of the things that came up is the people had a question for Jesus. They asked in the scriptures, Lord, tell us the name whereby we shall call this church. For their disputations among the people concerning this matter, they wanted to know what the church should be called. They didn't know. This was a new thing to them. And so, later on, he says, Jesus tells them, Whatsoever ye shall do, ye shall do it in my name. Therefore ye shall call the church in my name. And that's what we have done. We belong to the church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Latter-day Saints means people that live nowadays rather than back in the time that Jesus lived. So we belong to the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Now when I was a kid, this is what the logo of the church used to look like. All of the letters were pretty much the same size except for the and that sort of thing. Um, and then they decided to change it and make it look like this. Can you see the difference? What changed? The name of Jesus Christ is now much bigger. They wanted people to realize we weren't people that worshipped Mormon. We weren't people that worshipped Joseph Smith. We worship Jesus Christ. We are Christians and worship him. And then just not too long ago, President Nelson in General Conference unveiled this symbol. And it has the name of the church, but it also has a picture of Jesus Christ, the resurrected Jesus Christ. We believe that he still lives and that he is still actively part of our lives. So we are members of his church today. Well, after Jesus finished teaching them, he went back up to heaven, and it was kind of a busy time for the Nephites. They had a lot of things to do. Remember all those storms and earthquakes and things? They had cities to rebuild and roads to rebuild, all kinds of things that they needed to do, and the people kept pretty busy. Um, they were also doing a lot of baptizing, because since Jesus had come, guess what? There weren't Nephites and Lamanites anymore. Everybody believed the same thing. Everybody believed in Jesus. And so the, the apostles had a lot of people to baptize and bring into the church. It describes the people back then. It says the people were all converted unto the Lord. It says there were no contentions among them. Nobody had any fights with anybody else. Everybody got along. Can you imagine how that would be? He also said, every man did deal justly one with another. That means there was no crime, everybody was honest, nobody took anything that didn't belong to them. What a wonderful world that would be to live in, wouldn't it? Uh, it says that there were not rich and poor people, but that everybody took care of everybody else. And I just think that sounds like a wonderful, wonderful way to live. Uh, he says that they did walk after the commandments which they had received. So everybody was trying their best. They were trying to live the commandments of God. Um, the reason they were able to do this, I think, is because they loved Jesus so much. He had been there among them, and he had, they had had experiences with him, incredible spiritual experiences. And that love that they had for Jesus then just spills over into love for everybody else, and they were able to love those around them. It says, there was no contention because of the love of God that did dwell in the hearts of the people. They just loved everybody so much. And then it says one very important thing. It says, surely there could not be a happier people among all the people who had been created by the hand of God. There have been a lot of people on this earth, and here he's saying that nobody was ever happier than these people were, these Nephites, after the time that Jesus had visited with them. Now I want you to think about some things that make you happy. Maybe an ice cream cone with sprinkles. That can make you happy. How about snuggling a cute kitten? That can make you happy. They're just so adorable. Maybe playing at the beach. That can make you really happy. But those things are happy just for a short time. It's a temporary happiness. If we want to be happy like the people in the Book of Mormon are described, the way to do that 
is to live the gospel of Jesus Christ. We have to keep the commandments. We have to have that love of God in our hearts. And once we have that love of God in our hearts, then that will spill over and we'll love other people, we'll want to serve other people, we won't want to fight, we won't want to have contentions, we won't want to be dishonest. We'll do the things that we know are right. I have a testimony. I've lived long enough to have gained a testimony of this, that if we live the gospel, we can be happy. It's not something that makes us feel like we do when we have an ice cream cone or when we snuggle a kitten. It's a deep down inside happiness, a peace that comes from living the gospel. And I know that each of us can feel that peace and happiness that comes from living the gospel. And I say that in the name of Jesus.